I found you in the mystery, in ocean steep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name, and keep my eyes above the waves, when oceans rise, my soul
of your grace is here with me. You sing with me. The fullness of your grace is here with me. The richness of your beauty is all I see. The brightness of
thank you so much, Father, that, that you love us so perfectly and so much, Lord, that, that you've adopted us, Lord, and that as your church, we're your bride. And we just don't even fully understand that, Father. But we know that you love us. We know that you care about the little details in each one of our lives, Lord. And we thank you for that. We thank you for those moments, Lord, where you deliberately, Lord, and lovingly reveal that to us. And we just we cherish those moments. And we pray that you would help us to recognize those times, Father. Thank you, Lord. Will you please stand with us?
we just acknowledge that again today, Lord, that our victory is in you, our salvation is in you, Father. Everything that we truly need, Father, is from you and, and found in you. And we thank you again, Jesus, uh, for what you've done for us, for what you do for us on a daily basis, that your mercies are new every morning, Lord. And uh, we just we just thank you. We love you so much, Lord, and yet we know our love is imperfect and we struggle. And we thank you that you're gracious with us and that your spirit intercedes on our behalf. And so as we get into this last uh, message from Kim, Lord, the words you've given her to share with us, I just pray that your spirit would continue to move and open our hearts, Lord, and our ears to hear what you are saying to each one of us, Father. In Jesus' name. Wow. Worship team, thank you so much. You guys could have been a lot of other places. Yes. I am so moved by genuine worship. As I said earlier, against which the enemy has no defense. And I don't have a good voice, but I love to sing, and I'm so moved by people who do that well and have that particular gifting, because I don't. Wow. Jesus, Lord Jesus. Man, oh man, the Lord is at work. Wow, Lord Jesus, we are just in awe of you. We beg you to fill this place with your presence and that we would run and jump headlong deeper into who you are, that this would be a covenant day between our heart and yours, that we will purpose with you to do anything that you ask that brings you honor and glory. It's why you've made us. It's why you've redeemed us, because of your ocean of love, and that we would covenant with you today to let that ocean pour through us from this day forward. That is our hope and our heart's desire. Amen. Amen. This is it. This is our last time to meet together in this brief weekend. We've spoken about what it means to awaken before Jesus and acknowledge anything within us that the enemy can use to separate our heart from God, pouring those things out that Jesus can pour in and fill that cup of our heart. We have spoken at length about what it means to arise before our God and know him. My sheep know me and I know them. We know each other. And on that day, I'm going to open my arms wide. It's all I want. It's all I desire. And yet between now and that time, he's calling us to do one more thing, and that is to advance his purpose for coming into this world. We are an extension of the work that Jesus Christ started, that we would advance the kingdom of his saving, redeeming love. He's calling each one of us to advance all the knowledge of God's word in your life is worthless if it doesn't change your actions. James 2, 14 through 26 says that faith without works is dead. It's dead. It doesn't matter if you know the whole Bible forward and backward. If it doesn't change you before God, that's worthless. It must change our life, our behavior, our actions. Friends, there is no way that we can advance before our Lord without actively living out what we believe. Each one of us has been called into the great commission, not the great suggestion. We've been commissioned 
to share the hope of who Jesus Christ is. This life is not and never has been about our earthly comforts. It's been about us bringing comfort to those who are dying in our midst. It is time for us to run and pull those through the flames that are losing their battle for hope and draw them into the same redeeming hope that has transformed our hearts and our lives. I think that there's a reason why the early church was called Acts. It wasn't called Wants. He's calling us to act. I've redeemed you with my love. Take that message out into your world that others will know my saving love. This is what we were created to do. Acts 20:24 20, says, My life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others. That takes words. Telling others the good news about God's wonderful kindness and love. Make no mistake. The American church seems to have forgotten that with true redemption comes true responsibility to share the love that was so generously shared with you and with me. Throughout history, as I said earlier, millions have died that you and I would know the saving grace of Christ, and now it's our turn. What are we going to do with that saving grace, that baton of hope that Jesus shed his blood, that we would know him? What are we going to do with that? Are we going to hide it, or are we going to run it forward? We have a job to do, a commissioning that comes straight from heaven itself, and every step along the way is going to be opposed by hell itself, every single step. Thankfully, Jesus is our example. He came to this world and said, not only am I bringing you the love letter, but I'm also going to leave footprints, and you just follow me. And Jesus, when he was confronted um, by the enemy through Peter, he said in Matthew 16, 23, get behind me, Satan. And all my life I read that and thought, huh? Huh? Get behind me? Of all the things Jesus could have said to Satan, why did he say that? And what I now understand is because right there is where Jesus Christ is never going to be again because he is moving forward and advancing the kingdom of his Father. And he is never going to back up. There is no backup in Jesus Christ. And there shouldn't be in you and in I. So he told Satan, you can go where I will never be again. And that's where you can park yourself. And he calls you and I to do exactly the same thing. What Jesus didn't do when confronted by the enemy was say, well, here's how I feel. Or here's what I think. Or here's my vast experiences. He quoted scripture. He quoted scripture and guess what? Satan knew it too, but only one of them obeyed it. And that was the only difference in that moment. Only one was obeying it. And when Jesus quoted scripture, the word, living, breathing, word of God, the enemy was instantly defeated. Instantly defeated then and instantly defeated today. We need to know what this says. Because against God's word, no defense The enemy's plans are just incinerated as the light of Christ shines out. 1 John 1, or excuse me, John 1, 5 says that the light shines through the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it, ever. Guess who the light is? Jesus. Jesus. And to lay hold of that. He's calling you and I to do exactly the same thing, to advance and to move forward and become the warriors that he's designed each one of us to be. Jesus. I love that Jesus said in John 14, 30, the enemy has no power over me. And when I am in you, he won't have any power over you either. And the more of you that I occupy the less space he can try to attack. He has no power over Jesus. 
and over those who are living in balance before Jesus Christ. How do we do that? Enter into the fray of the battle of this world, this heavenly spiritual battle. How do we do that? I love that, again, we just do what Jesus did when he was confronted by Satan. He just spoke scripture. And you and I can do that too. And I've often thought, as we enter into this battle, in my crazy visionary way, I was thinking that, wouldn't that be cool if you had like God's word tattooed all over your arms and you could be like, how about that one for today? (laughs) And the Lord's let me know, oh honey, as good as that might be, I want my word tattooed here and here in your head, in your mind, and I want it tattooed in your heart because when my word is tattooed in here, it comes out here through your mouth. When my word is tattooed inside your heart, it comes out here through your life. Know what this says. Entering into this season of of warfare and battle, of advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ, it is God's word that defeats the enemy, and I'm learning it and memorizing it which is hard for a busy brain, but nothing is impossible. And the Lord wants us to do it. And one verse that, as I'm stepping into this place, if I knew no other verse in the Bible about advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ than this, it would be enough. And it simply is, uh, it's 1 Corinthians 16, 13. And it's five little teeny tiny sentences, and they fall like hammer blows. Be on guard. When facing your enemy, be on guard. Stand true to what you believe. Be courageous. Be strong. And let everything you do be done in love. I think that for anyone who's ever questioned what Jesus Christ wants you to do, here it is in a single verse. You want to be a warrior? You want to awaken, arise, and advance for your king? Here's your marching orders. Right here, be on guard, stand true, be courageous, strong, and loving. Let's take a look at that quickly. Being on guard from what? Most American Christians seem to have forgotten that we are in the war of a lifetime. Our great enemy wants the faith in you to die because he knows that that branch of Christianity meant to grow through you. If your faith dies, so will all the others who are meant to know Christ through you. We have to stand against every attack of distraction that pulls our attention away from the truth of Jesus Christ. Every attack of heartache, of anger, of bitterness, unforgiveness, busyness, jobs, relationships, earning money, earning a title, earning positions, videos, books, movies, the internet. Satan doesn't care if it's glamorous. He just cares that it works. We must be on guard against every distraction. Jesus says, you're going to finish this race by doing one thing, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, by keeping your focus on me from beginning to end. That's how you're going to do it. We need to guard against every distraction that pulls our attention away from Christ. There's only one God, one, and our focus needs to remain on him. Number two, Stand true to what you believe. Ephesians 5.1 says that we are to be imitators of Christ in everything that we do. If the world around you does not know what you believe, if your coworkers do not know what you believe, if, if your friends don't know what you believe, if your family doesn't know what you believe, if you look and sound and act so much like the world that no one can tell you apart, then you and I have failed We have failed. We are commanded in 1 John to be the light, love, and life of Jesus Christ in this world. Are we? Standing true to what we believe. I'm a child. I'm a daughter of the king. And it was blood that paid the price for this life. Are we living like we believe that's true? Be courageous. 
Being courageous is not a passive thing. It is definitely moving forward. Being courageous is not worrying and hoping everything turns out all right. Being courageous is doing the right thing, even and especially when it's hard. Courage stands. Courage stands. Be strong. As a former fitness trainer for over a dozen years, I can tell you with certainty, not one human being ever born in this earth ever got, stood up in the morning and said, today, I'm going to get strong. And kabam, they were instantly strong. It doesn't work that way. Strength isn't something you can just have. Strength is something you earn. You earn it. I wrote, strength happens when we're consistent to move forward and advance through that which challenges us. It comes through consistent practice of the same. And man, oh man, have a handful of you worked hard on that. Move through that which challenges you. Strength is earned. Don't avoid challenges. Press through them. And lastly, that everything you do must be done in love. Friends, everything is an all-inclusive word. There are no exceptions to it. Love, the reason I believe that love is attached to this is that it's the greatest gift of all. And there's not a heart that's ever beat in this world that doesn't need it. Love is the delivery system upon which the truth of Christ moves into the heart of another human being. The hammer blows of being on guard, standing true, being courageous and being strong are covered with the beautiful covering of love. It's like velvet over steel. Everyone needs love. Let everything you do be done in love. So when it comes to advancing the cause of Jesus Christ, how does this fit into the bigger picture of what God wants you and I to do? It fits like a glove because what he wants us to do is the Great Commission. Love God first, love each other, spread the gospel. That's what he wants us to do. All of us. Often I'm, I'm encountered by people who are, you know, I'm not sure what God wants me to do. That's what he wants us all to do. It says in James 1.5, if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him. And he'll be glad to tell you. Ask him. So we are called to love God first. Mark 12.30, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. That's a lot of alls, and that's a lot of absolutes. What he's not saying is, love, love me with part of your heart. Do you understand that when we give God part of our heart, that's the only part that he can heal. That's the only part he can fill. That's like giving God part of your cancer. You're going to die from the rest of it. He doesn't want to heal part of you. He wants to heal all of you. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. Next verse, love God. Love your neighbor as yourself, excuse me. And number three, share the gospel, Luke 24, 47, with my authority, Him. with my authority, take this message of repent, repentance to all the nations. There is forgiveness of sin for all who believe. You want to know how to do that? The Great Commission, simple, be on guard, stand true, be strong, courageous, and loving. God's word fits together. Again, I'm such a visual learner, and I'm always asking the Lord, help me see with my eyes the truth of your word. And in his great kindness, I see it everywhere I go. And All of you who know me well know how much I love the wilderness. And my parents died, moved in with my grandparents. My grandpa was an outdoorsman, and he was a hunter and a fisherman and a trapper. And he taught me how to read my environment and to read the ground. And it's like this giant message board of everything that's happening, and it's talking all the time. And, And if you don't think so, it's because I'm not paying attention And it's just fascinating to me to read my environment everywhere I go. And all the tracks and, oh my goodness, it's just so fun. But he also told me that as a a hunter, you need to recognize your opponents. And when you encounter a bear, which you will, that there's some things you need to know. 
you need to drop your gaze and turn a quarter shoulder and just quietly move aside. I have no issue with you. I'm not here to take anything from you. I'm giving you respect. No problem between us. And I've encountered dozens of bears. And it works. It's amazing. And they're like, huh, okay. And we're good. We're good. And he said, if you ever encounter a mountain lion, which you never will, they're stealth predators, you need to make yourself as big as possible and engage direct eye contact. And whatever you do, don't back up. Anyone who owns a house cat knows that elicits an attack response. And, and he said, you'll never see one because they're, they're stealth predators. They are ranked the number two feline killer on the planet. Why? Because they always attack from behind and they always take their prey down by the neck and they either break the neck or they pierce the carotid arteries. And either way, their prey is usually still alive when they start to eat it. Mountain lions have been documented in a single leap to leap 40 horizontal feet. That's probably as wide as this room in one leap. And 20 vertical feet, two stories. Those of you who have a house cat, multiply that by 10. That's power. And they are a stealth predator that always attacks from behind. No wonder they thrive in every state in our nation, every single one. And he's right, I've seen their tracks, I've seen their scat, I've seen their scratch marks, I've seen their tracks over my tracks where they've been following me, never seen one. And so with all that information in mind, as my life is narrowing down and becoming more of this, being in an office and, and working on a laptop, uh, I, have, I, I sit right in front of this giant window, and if I can't be outside, then I'm going to bring all the outside to me. So I put these two huge bird feeders, and I feed the birds, and, and any number of birds come down, and chipmunks and squirrels and bunnies, and the deer come in, and, and it's like being in a game blind all day long, and it's amazing I get anything done at all, because I'm just so captivated by all this world going on out there, and not that long ago, I was in my office and I saw something that I have never seen before. This mother gray squirrel came in the yard, which I see all the time. And gray squirrels, I know you have them here, they're about a foot long in body and about a foot long in their tail and they're really light gray with a white downy belly. And they're beautiful. They're beautiful and I see them almost every day. But what I have never seen before or since is behind her came a little baby. And he was so cute. And, and it was the first time that I'm sure he'd ever left their nest. And the world was just so big and wide-eyed wonder. And, and I, I would watch him go to blades of grass and bend him over with his little front paws and smell it and then bite it and taste it and then let it go. And then go to the next one and bend it over and smell it, bite it, taste it, and let it. I mean, just exploring the world. And mom's like, okay, son. Right, here's the pile of food. You come here and you eat as much as you can hold, and then the rest of it you squirrel away in your cheeks. That's why they call us squirrels. And he was just, just could care less about food, and the world is so exciting and amazing, and every now and then he'd catch sight of his own tail, and he would jump on his tail and frisk it and roll down the hill, and life is awesome! I have a toy attached to my own butt! <laughs> and so... I was watching them, and just finally the mom leaves the baby over there and comes clear over to where I am, and there's a tall bird feeder. She's like three feet in front of me, just digging through, getting all the good stuff. And, and in an instant, a hundred birds just went a hundred different directions, and a cooper's hawk just cruises the yard, sees the squirrel, banks a turn, and lands on a branch right like three feet above this baby, and the baby just went flat to the ground. I don't know what just happened, but I think it's really bad. And before I could even knock on the glass to scare the hawk away, that mother squirrel in one leap was halfway across the yard and in the second leap was flying feet first toward the face of her mortal enemy. And I was really close. You could see this hawk's expression go from yum, lunch, to oh my gosh, crazy flying squirrel! And just right before they impacted, the hawk ducked out and the squirrel hit the ground ran back to her infant, and they touched noses. Are you okay? I'm okay. We're okay. We're okay. Wow, God, I can't believe that I got to even see that. Talk about this 
a squirrel being on guard, standing true to what she believes, the defense of her family. She was courageous, she was strong, and dang, only the love of a mother <laughs> would make an animal of prey fearlessly attack its mortal enemy. All that hawk had to do is spring up and open its talons, and lunch would have flown right in. Her instant action saved both of their lives. Jesus, speak. And in that moment, I could hear the Lord say that although your enemy is great, I am greater still. Do not fear him. Fear me. I love you. I love you. And because I am greater still and I live in you, don't fear what threatens to destroy you. Stand against it. I'm stronger in you. We believe the enemy's bluffs. And he just walks right in and pillages our life, our family, our friends. Because we believe it. And lastly, the Lord said that no matter what you were created to be, if you act like prey, cowering under a shroud of fear, instead of standing behind my shield of faith, your enemy will destroy you. The truth is, is that God's creation already seems to know the truth of God's word. God's creation gets it. Recently, I was riding my horse out in the wilderness with two friends, and I'm riding on a 16-hand Anglo-Arab, half thoroughbred, half Arabian, just pure jet fuel compacted into a horse, and just a beast of a horse, and I've got nothing but speed and power, let me go. And, and this little bird came out along the ground. It was a nighthawk. It was this big, and it was beating its wings on the ground and hissing, you are too close to my family. And 1,200 pounds of horse and rider went straight up into the top of the tallest pine tree. My horse has got her legs around my neck. Mom, there's a freaky bird down there that's going to get me. And a little bird weighing ounces drove off an insurmountable foe by being fearless, courageous, strong, loving, a bird. More than once, actually this just happened a couple months ago, I had a friend up in the wilderness and, and this doe came around a bush and squared up with me and just went like this. You are trespassing. You are too close to my farm. And even though I know you can kill me, I will die in the defense of my family. I want to be like that. And if creation already gets that, don't, doesn't it make sense that God is calling us to do the same thing and stand in defense of those that we love, those around us who are dying without hope? He's calling us to do the same thing. Jesus, just keep speaking, keep revealing, keep showing me this truth. I had a chance to go to Colorado a couple years ago and we had started a similar ministry in northeastern Colorado, and it was just too far away from any population. And so we were praying with some friends about a different piece of property that was 30 minutes above Denver at 8,500 feet, just beautiful. And on our way, driving up this very mountainous road, my friend told me, um, the two guys, my husband and her husband, were in the front seat, and we were in the back seat. And she told me, she said, as we started this ministry, uh, another couple has shouldered with us, and so we both have 14-year-old sons. And in a moment of lying, the enemy led her son to believe that the best answer to the problems that he faced was to take his life. He was 14. He was just a boy. And she said, I am so mad on our watch. How could this happen? I am so mad. She said, I can't hug my son and not grieve for my friend knowing she will never hug her son again. She will never meet his wife. She'll never hold his children. The enemy just stole him right out from under us. He just stole him. 
and I'm just so angry. And we just cried tears all the way up and finally got up to this location and it was a pretty somber time and it was just beautiful, huge sloping property in deep grass and ponderosa and aspen stands. And, and so we just started to walk and pray over this property and, and I could see where it appeared that water had flowed down and that's a big deal because Denver's in a massive drought. And I walked over, and indeed, there, were, there was a spring that was barely flowing. And as I started to follow this waterway, it dropped down into kind of a bog that was filled with fallow aspens. And as I was walking down through there, I could see antler tines sticking up through the duff on the ground. Only three species on earth shed antlers, moose, elk, and deer. And for a human being to walk to that exact place where this phenomenon has happened is so incredibly rare. And I've come to learn that this is a covenant between me and the Lord and that whatever I'm processing, whatever I'm considering or praying about or just pondering through, when I find that, it's him saying, I've got it. You can trust me for this. And I thought, oh, God. And so I went over, and I started to pick up this antler. And as I picked it up, they were, it it was both, and they were actually connected to the skull. These were not shed. This, This was a massive buck. These were huge, big, dark antlers. This, this deer was so big, you could have rode him. He was just huge, and something took him down. And I, uh, wow, Lord, these are beautiful. And as the Lord started to speak to me, he made it very clear, this is indeed a covenant. It is not for you. It is for your grieving friend. And so I went over and shared with her the word that I believe that the Lord had given to me for her. And then continued to walk on down. and, And just now we're far apart. We're way out of sight from each other. And processing and praying and and all of a sudden there's another one sticking up and I thought Lord you are such a fox what are you doing and I walked over and I found this and it's actually a little teeny tiny elk antler and this very spirit-filled porcupine chewed off the back tine so this will fit in my luggage I can take this home with me Lord wow thank you this is beautiful And as I was just praising the Lord, I looked down and I saw its mate, which is very, very rare to find both because elk travel 20 miles a day. And to find both of these laying next to each other meant he was in a bed and and dropped one and probably just rubbed his head on the ground and dropped the other. I've never found these before and I just thought, wow, God, thank you. This is so amazing. (sighs) What are you trying to tell me. And it was like this incredible download. I can't even, I don't even have words to explain this, this rush of emotion and imagery and, and overlaying all through it was the voice of the Lord saying, I am so angry. The enemy has moved into my land that my son gave his life to redeem And he's attacking my people and he's killing my children. And I want it back. I'm calling my people to rise up and take back the land in this huge imagery of all these battles and horses rearing and the clash and sparks of of weaponry and shields and a profile of Joshua as he's looking up and to see the wall of Jericho falling from the top out and and just unbelievable waves and waves of imagery. And as I'm walking now, kind of up a little hill, I just heard this shout, look, and just stood up straight. And seriously, from me to the podium, maybe eight or ten feet away, snow had bent a bush over, and right there was a mountain lion in full crouch. I see you, and I'm going to kill you. 
And I just thought, whoa. I was wearing exactly what I have on clothes. I don't even have a pocket knife, Lord. They take them every time I bring them. I have nothing to fight with. And the Lord said, yes, you do. Lift up the weapons of war that I have given you and fight. Okay, okay. And I held these up and I hissed at it. I see you. And it hissed back. And its eyes were so dilated for the kill, they were completely black with the tiniest rim of gold. And I just thought, holy smokes, the things that go through your mind, my husband is never going to believe this. (laughs) Troy, Troy, he's two miles away. And I had enough presence of mind to know that we're on a very steep hillside. I'm going to move around to the, the high point and, and get above it. And as I did this, it just whipped around and I'm taking you on. I'm taking you on. And now I'm standing here like this, growling at a mountain lion. And it feels like it's been today. And I'm thinking, Lord, I can't back up. What do you want me to do? And I just heard, fight! Take back the land! And I jumped at it, two big jumps, screaming, ah! with these. And guess what it did? Totally nothing. (laughs) It completely called my bluff and just got flatter to the ground. And we're three feet apart, and it was like looking into the black eyes of sin in my life and hearing it say, you're not really going to drive me out. You've always known that I've been here. You've just never seen my face until today. I don't believe you have the guts. You're not really going to make me leave. You're going to just back up, and the minute you turn your back, I'm going to kill you. And it just made me so mad. And I screamed one more time and jumped, and right before those went through the back of its neck, little brain activity said, I think she's serious. And it just slid out to the side and ran down the hill. And on a, its tail was going around in these big circles. And it, the tip of the tail is white. And it was like this flag of surrender. And just standing there thinking, I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> Jesus, yeah! You are still mighty to save. You are mighty to save. Jesus Christ is calling you and I, to do the same thing. He's calling us to take back the land. God is for us. Who can stand against us? He's calling us to take back the land of our own heart, to take back the land of our own family, and take back the land of our community. He's calling us to advance his loving redemption forward, taking back the land of our own heart, those secret places of sin, are we willing to drive out the sin and defend the life that Jesus Christ died for? What about your family? Has the enemy entered into your family through books and movies and video games and the internet and Facebook? And not that Facebook is from the devil, but man, is he using it in overdrive. And all the junk of of the spiritualism that's on the internet in all movies and on television and books and Harry Potter and Twilight and all the zombies and all the paranormal spiritual junk. It is just kid packaged witchcraft. And we know it. And I've had parents come and justify, but they really like it and all their kids are reading it. Moms, your kids don't need another peer. They need a mom who will stand up and say, I love you more. And that not on my watch. As long as you live in this house, I will create a place of protection for you. When you grow up and get big and have your own house, you can read and watch whatever you want. But in this house, I will stand and defend you. And you might not like it or understand it now, but I love you more. And someday you will. Your kids need you to stand and defend them and help them grow in the truth of Jesus Christ. They don't need another friend. They need you to cover them. 
with strength, courage, and love. That's what they need. Are you and your community pushing back the enemy's boundaries with the love of Jesus Christ? Jesus is calling us to take it back, the land that he died for, and to lift up the weapons of war that he has given you, and they will be unique to you. For some of you, your weapon of war is going to be a laptop. For some of you, your weapon of war might be a camera, or a guitar, or your voice, or your office, or the cab of your truck. Apparently, a set of antlers will work just fine. For some of you, your weapon of war is going to be your smashed up minivan with Happy Meal parts rammed up under the seat. Use it for the glory of God. Thank you. And some of you who are thinking, I'm not sure what the Lord has given me, you got two of these. And he's calling us to put our hands together and fight in the heavenly realms and start praying over your own heart, your own family, your own community, and your nation and take it back with the love of Jesus Christ. I love the truth found in 1 Peter 5.8. Oftentimes I encounter people that are like, you know, I know what you're saying, but I just don't really want to offend anyone. Well, ladies, the enemy sure as hell is not worried about offending you. As a matter of fact, he's moving into your house right now because he knows that you won't stop him. Stand up and defend the lives that Jesus Christ is calling you to defend, starting with this one. I love the truth in 1 Peter 5, 8. Be careful, watch out for the attacks of the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for some victim to devour. Take a firm stand against him. How much more clear can that be said? Take a firm stand against him and be strong in your faith. I love so much about this verse, but what I love about it most today is the word like. Our enemy is like a roaring lion, but I serve the lion of Judah the coming king, the lamb of God, and the bright morning star, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And Satan might pick a fight in your life, but Jesus Christ will always finish it when you turn to him. And he will finish what he has started in you. He can be trusted for it. And so, when it comes to taking back the land... That is going to mean something different for each one of you. What lies within your heart that stands in opposition to a deeper relationship with Jesus? Is he really first? And if he's not, what is? And are you willing to drive it out? What lies within your family that's preventing a closeness to each other? Lord, Moms, are you leading your kids closer to Jesus or further away? When it comes to your family, your community, your family of friends, is your presence in that gathering drawing them toward the hope of Jesus Christ or leading them further away? And still there are some here today who know all about who Jesus is but he is not your Lord and Savior. And you are just getting attacked by the enemy and mauled at will whenever he wants, and you're just tired of fighting. Whatever you are facing today, the answer is still the same. There is hope. There is one who can deliver, and his name is Jesus. I'm going to close with this last thought. We live in a world of such great compromise and complacency. Oh, that was a nice message. Thank you. How can we be unchanged when we encounter the truth of God's word? When we encounter the presence of his Holy Spirit? Are our hearts that dead and numb and blind that we can go, oh, it was a great conference. Thanks a lot. Jesus, Lord Jesus, please come and have your way in our lives that we will see you as you are the living, risen Savior 
and that we would stand and live like we believe that's true, that we've been redeemed and we've been chosen and we are daughters of the King of Kings and that he has already won every battle we will ever face and to stand and live like we believe that's true. It is time. It is time for us to take back the land that belongs to him. It is time for us to start living out the truth of 1 Corinthians 16, 13, of being on guard, of standing firm, of being courageous, strong, and loving. And it is time for us to awaken, arise, and advance before our God and run into the battle that rages around us, shouting the truth of 1 John 5, 4, that says, every child of God defeats this evil world by doing one thing, trusting in Jesus for the victory. It's time. It's time to start living out Ezekiel 37, that the victory can only come in one way, as we awaken to our sin and acknowledge our dry bones, as we arise and know God and allow our lives to be filled with the, the, the wind of the Holy Spirit, it is time for us to advance his message of hope by joining that vast army to share in his love. Will you bow with me? As the Lord is calling me to, again, what I say has no weight or value or purpose outside of the truth of God's word. And before we leave today, I just, I just want to read some scripture over you and seal what Jesus is doing in your heart. Not one of you is going to make it home before you start to hear the voice of the enemy. His name literally means the accuser. And you will start hearing you're too broken. God can't use someone like you. You're too guilty. Nobody knows what you've done, but I do. God can't use someone like you. You're too afraid. You stand and stay in that tissue paper prison of fear that I've created for you and die there. You're too weak. God can't use someone like you. We can listen to that voice or we can stand on the truth of God's word that says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, my gracious favor is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may work through me. Since I know it is all for Christ's good, I am quite content with my weaknesses and with insults and hardships and persecutions and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians 6, 7, we have righteousness as our weapon both to attack and defend ourselves. And waiting and ready to strike is Genesis 4, 7. Sin is waiting to attack and destroy you. And you must subdue it. How? We are no match for the enemy, but we can all stand behind the one who has already defeated him. For he is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word, the spoken word of our testimony. Revelations 12.10, it has happened at last. The salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser has been thrown down to earth. And the one who accuses our brothers and sisters before our God day and night, they have defeated him. Because of the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they were not afraid to die. We are saved and victorious by the blood of the lamb. And the spoken word of our testimony. Ladies with our heads still bowed. It is time. To awaken and repent. Speak out anything that stands between you and Jesus and allow him to break the bondage of any sin. It is time to arise and redeem what time is left by committing your life to love God more than all other things and know him. To recommit your life 
from this day forward. It is time to advance and take responsibility that you and only you are responsible to step into the battle that Jesus Christ is calling you to fight for your family, for your friends, for your community. Are you willing to be fully committed to him? In the quietness of this moment, I'm going to ask you to do something. If you want to ask Jesus into your heart, if you want to commit all of your heart, not part, all of your heart to serve the Lord from this day forward, if you want to commit to the battle that he is calling you to run and fight, if you desire him to fill you with more of his presence, will you make a physical covenant before the Lord right now and just stand up? That's me. I want that. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, Jesus, Lord Jesus, we just raise our hands before you and we say yes and amen. We want more and more and more. And as women of your word and women that love you on this day, as these women are reaching their hands toward you, that you would reach back the rest of the way across the universe and pick them up. That's my girl. I got you. Jesus, as we raise our hands before you, I pray that the power and the anointing and the roaring wind of your Holy Spirit would fill this place and would roar amongst us and your holy fire would come down as our hands are raised before you. Yes, please, we want that. Pick me, pick me, Jesus. Will you fill me now with your Holy Spirit? Jesus, that you, the, the fire of your Holy Spirit would come down in laser beams of light onto the head of every woman who's got her hands in the air saying, I want that. Yes, I am committing to you. Come now, Holy Spirit, and fill this vessel. I pray that your holy fire, that these women would feel it coming in through the top of their head and just burning down their neck and behind their face and down their shoulders and their arms, and that they would feel the fire of your heat in their fingertips, blazing in their chest and consuming their heart down their back and their legs into the soles of their feet, and that they would feel their feet transforming into the beautiful feet that bring the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. We ask for more and more, and more. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb. Just speak out words of praise to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you and we praise you. We give you all the glory, honor, power, and praise. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness and that as long as we have breath, there is always hope to be redeemed. Thank you. Thank you. We worship you as the one and only living, risen Savior, King Jesus. And Lord, in further covenant to you, that we would strengthen our ability to stand for you. Jesus, I just, I just feel so strongly that ladies, we're supposed to just move out to the side of the room and we're just going to make a big giant circle. Just start moving out. We're going to just make a big circle. Just circle around. All the way around the room. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Just keep circling. Come all the way around. Come all the way around. This is the new army that vows and is committing themselves to service of the King of Kings. As we've been praying... I I could see in my mind um, shafts of light coming down, and in those shafts of light were words given. And would you seal this time by speaking of some of those words given? 
Just be brave. This is what the Lord just said to me today or yesterday or during the afternoon, right now, as we were praying. This is what the Lord just said to me in the company of believers that you are going to shoulder and fight with. Just speak out that word. Go, ladies. Freedom, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom is that you would allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and carry that freedom out into the world. I, I, I see each one of you going out from this place like little vessels of light. And everywhere you go, that you would change the atmosphere of where you are instead of the other way around. And that you would walk in and release the presence of the Holy Spirit and watch the enemy run and ask Jesus to go before you and he will and that you bring the freedom of the living God into the darkness of this world. It is time. Yes. Be brave, please. Yes. How can we not when we know Jesus has already won? Stand. Boldness. Amen. Yes. Amen. We are mighty warriors of Jesus, and the enemy is just screaming, that's not true, that's not true. Look at all the brokenness. It's all accusation and lie. You have been bought with a price. Your sin has been forgiven. Before God, you are white. He says it that we can stand before him without a single fault. He sees us as his daughters. That's what's true. Yes. Those who love my father obey him. No obedience, no love. You can't say you love God if you're not doing what he says. Amen. Yeah, we're never going to go backward that the freedom that is happening in this room right now, you're, you're not even going to get to the car before the enemy will challenge that. And, and for Jesus to do exactly what he did, we are never going to take a step back ever again. Hmm. Take every thought captive, and I didn't hear the one in the back. They have taken a stand and made a covenant with you in their heart and in their bodies. And Lord, when we put our body in a position of praise and of worship, everything else falls in the line. And Lord, as they are making a physical covenant with you and speaking out your words of truth, that you would combine all of this by the power of your Holy Spirit and fill every one of these women that they are committing this day, to walk through those doors back into the darkness with their head up and their shoulders back, not because they're arrogant or prideful, but because they are confident in their king. They know who they are in you, and they know who you are in them, and they will not back down. Not in arrogance or pride, but in confident assurance I am a daughter of the king, and I fight for the one who's already won. Lord Jesus, I pray that on this day that your kingdom would be here on earth as it is in heaven through these women, that as your Holy Spirit fills us to greater and greater degrees, that that spirit of heaven would be poured out into our lives, our homes, our families, our neighborhoods, and that your spirit in these vessels would change the environment and the darkness would be turned into light. And their land entrusted to them would be taken back for your glory, King Jesus. Equip them now, we pray, all these things by the power and for the glory of you, King Jesus, and all God's people said, Amen. Jesus, woo!
Woo! Yeah! We love you. We praise you. Jesus. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for each and every lady that was here today, and you know exactly who needed to be here, why they needed to be here, and what you were going to speak to them, Lord. And I pray that you would just keep this fire burning brightly in each one of us, Father, that you would just speak to each of us, that you would show us our weapons, Lord, that you would direct our paths, that you would point us right to you and advance us forward, Lord. I just thank you so much for everyone involved in this, for all the ladies who came, for Kim and for the worship team, for all the breakout session leaders, for the kitchen crew, just for everybody involved, Lord. And I just pray that you would just bless them just fully and joyfully each day, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, ladies.